In previous videos, we've been looking at capacitors and how capacitors behave when they're charging and discharging in simple circuits. And one of the things that we spoke about was that capacitors have a transient behavior. And we talked about the fact that when a capacitor charges, we have this growth curve, this time period where the voltage across that capacitor is gradually increasing um, as, as the capacitor charges up. And we're going to look at something similar in this video, but rather than looking at capacitors, we're going to shift our focus to a different component, which is the inductor. So on the right hand side here, we have an inductor in this circuit and inductors are measured in inductance, L. So possibly a new term for us, but L is inductance. And inductance is measured in a unit called Henry's, which we usually give the letter H. So in this example here, we have a very simple circuit with a voltage source on the left hand side. We have a switch, we have a resistor, and we have an inductor. When we looked at capacitors, we said that capacitors are basically components that store up energy in the form of charge. And inductors are similar in a sense because they also store energy, but they store energy in the form of an electromagnetic field that they build up. An inductor essentially is just a coil of wire, and we can see inductors in various different applications. If you think of the windings on a, a motor or on a transformer, these are inductors essentially, and they're building up a certain amount of energy uh, over time. So what's going to happen is when we close the switch in this circuit, we're going to see a transient response, very similar to when we looked at capacitors. In this video, we're going to look at the current in the circuit. So the current that flows around this series circuit here, which I'll mark as I. And because there's an inductor in this circuit, we'll actually see that the current uh, has a transient uh, behavior that looks very similar to the growth curve that we saw in our first capacitors video. So if we look at this graph that I've sketched below here of I against T, current against time, what happens is when we close this switch, current begins to flow, but it doesn't begin to flow instantly around this circuit because we've got this inductor which needs to build up its magnetic field, its magnetic energy we actually see the current take the form of a growth curve. And so what happens is current begins to increase quite rapidly at first, but then it levels off over time. So this is an example of a growth curve, uh, just like in our capacitors video. And it's an example of a transient response in this circuit. I've called in the title there, I've called it an LR circuit. And what I mean by that, L standing for inductance and R standing for resistance, it's simply to say that we've got an inductor and a resistor in this circuit. So an LR circuit is the type of circuit we see here. And when we close that switch, current begins to flow, but it increases in the form of this growth curve. Now, very similar to when we looked at uh, capacitors, a uh, LR circuit will have a time constant and a full um, transient, a full growth curve, just like we said before, takes roughly five time constants. So if we have one time constant uh, being marked on as tau, like we said in the previous videos, then it'll take roughly uh, five time constants, five times tau to see that full growth curve. To calculate the time constant though, we said in our previous video, which involved capacitors, tau equals R times C. Well, we don't have C anymore. We don't have a capacitor in the circuit. And so the formula for a time constant uh, for an LR circuit is slightly different. It's tau equals L over R, inductance divided by resistance. Once these five time constants have elapsed, then we know that the current has reached its maximum value and it'll continue 
um, to, to remain at that steady state current until the circuit is switched off again. So one thing we have to consider in the examples that we're going to look at is how do we calculate this steady state current? Well, it's simply a case of looking at our circuit. Because when L is allowing the full value of current to flow, then we can simply think of our circuit as a voltage source and a resistor. So our steady state current, the current that would be the full value of current that would, would be allowed to flow, is simply the current that would flow if that inductor was not there or if it was just a wire. So our steady state current, uh, I'll express as I. SS, the steady state current, is just calculated using Ohm's law, V over R. Finally, we know that we can express our current at any point as a growth curve, and we talked about our growth curve in the previous examples on capacitors, and we had a growth curve formula to express the growth curve. So we can do something similar in this uh, LR circuit, but we need to express our growth curve in terms of current. So we can write our growth curve formula something like this. Uh, I, I'll just mark it as a little i, is ISS multiplied by 1 minus E to the power minus T over tau. Now you might recognize that that formula looks similar to the growth curve when we looked at um, capacitors, but there's a few little differences here. So I want to have a look at the different terms in this formula. First of all, I is the term for the current at any given point. So I've marked it as a little i just to make it um, clearly different from the supply current. But I, the little i, is meant to represent the current at any given time. ISS, we said, was the steady state current, which we can calculate using Ohm's law. And then we have that multiplied by 1 minus E, the exponential function, to the power minus T over tau. Well, T is the time at which we want to calculate any given current. And tau was the time constant, which we said was equal to L over R. Let's apply this formula now by looking at a simple example. I've put some circuit values onto our components here. So we can say, first of all, that our cell, for example's sake, is 15 volts. And we have a 10 ohm resistor, and our inductor has a value of 220 millihenries. And our question is just below there. It asks us, what's the current, I've, again I've marked that as a little i, the current at 5 milliseconds. So 5 milliseconds after the switch is closed, what's the current going to be? Well, to do this, we need to calculate a couple of things first before we can think about using our growth curve formula. The first one is to calculate the time constant in this circuit. And we said the tau, the time constant, was equal to L over R. Well, in this case, L is 220 millihenries. And if we're using um, milli, the standard prefix, for 10 to the minus 3, we can say that uh, our inductance L is 220 times 10 to the minus 3 over R, which we said was 10 ohms, so divided by 10. And that gives me an answer of 0 0.022 or 22 milliseconds. So now that I know the time constant, the only other thing I need to know is ISS, the steady state current. And we said that ISS we could calculate through Ohm's law. It's what's the maximum current that is going to be possible to flow in this circuit. And we can calculate that just by saying V over R, 15 volts over 10 ohms. And that gives us a steady state current of 1.5 amps. So we know that the current in this circuit is going to start at zero. The switch, is going to, the switch is going to close, and that current is going to increase up to a maximum of 1.5 amps, where it will level off. But our question, if you remember, on the left-hand side here, asks us to calculate what's the current going to be at exactly 5 milliseconds after the switch is closed. So to do that, 
finally we need to use our growth curve formula and we said that our growth curve formula i equals iss multiplied by 1 minus e to the power minus t over tau and putting some values into that we know that iss is 1.5 multiplied by 1 minus e to the power minus t well t in this case 5 milliseconds and again I need to be careful with how I express that in my formula milli being the standard prefix for 10 to the minus 3 so I need to say that that is to the power of minus 5 times 10 to the minus 3 over tau which we said was 22 milliseconds 22 times 10 to the minus 3 now in reality those 10 to the minus 3's are the same on the top and on the bottom so really I could express that because they cancel out as just minus 5 over 22 so in this case I might simplify that expression a little bit I'll remove that um, fraction there and we can just say that that's the same as minus 5 or to the power of minus 5 over 22 when we calculate all of that we come out with an answer of 0 0.305 amps or better yet we could multiply by a factor of a thousand to express that in milliamps that would be 305 milliamps so I hope you found this video useful first of all looking at the inductor in this LR circuit and then considering how current takes the form of a growth curve when inductors are in simple uh, series DC circuits like this and then finally we've used the growth curve formula similar to like we did when we looked at capacitors to calculate the current at any given point in that transient.